Welcome to Sports Ecom 101. This is the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, Vern Glenn of CBS affiliate Kate in San Francisco, and Russell Jackman. Uh, R- Russell Jackman Esquire, I guess. We that is it. correct. Uh, yes, yes, master of the contract. Don't forget it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. At each commercial break, we're going to ask a sports trivia question. And, uh, you know, last time it was a little bit too easy. So we've got impossible baseball questions for oh, you. I, won't uh, 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 I mean, they're not really impossible. That's just sort of a to get you all excited. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, so so uh, when we come back in the next segment, uh, there's a, a few things on my list. First, uh, unfortunately, it's so sad. Bob Gibson. Oh, oh what a guy! It's got over Tom Seaver. <laughs> yeah, Bob Gibson, Tom Seaver, Lou Brock. How about that? Yes. And yeah. Road Warrior Animal. It's all tough. It's been yeah. so many losses so quickly. Yeah, I said I remember hearing these stories about how Bob would not, you know, not only not on the field. But pretty much, you you just don't talk to anybody that's not in your team. I mean, that yeah. just seemed to be a way of life for him. And if uh, you hit, if you take him deep, go ahead and circle bases and just keep your head down. Yeah, I mean, because yeah, yeah. he he generally, I mean, he's not going to throw at you if you just. Oh, he oh he would. No, no. Yeah, what I would. mean, what I mean is, if you just hit a home run and just quickly try, roll and run around. Uh, he's not going to retaliate unless, no. again, unless you're like trying to showboat or something. Yeah, yeah. You, you're next at bat. He'll let you know. Yeah, or he'll catch yeah. you in the locker room. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll come settle it with you in the locker room. I've heard a really? few stories about that too. I had heard. Vernon, did you heard any of those stories? I've just heard stories from, from like uh, anywhere from Tim McCarver just talking about how he would just say, "Hey, just just get behind the plate because that's as close as you're going to get to a hit." Stuff like that. So it, <laughs> it, it, it's. it's <laughs> All right. This uh, segment of Sports Econ 101 is sponsored by Pacific Private Money, providing mortgage investments that are currently yielding over 7.5% secured by real estate. It doesn't get any more conservative than them. Check them out at PacificPrivateMoney.com. Stay with us. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be right back. Well, welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here along with Vern Glenn and Russell Jackman. Uh, so first, um, you guys want to mention anything else about uh, Bob Gibson? We yeah. said don't well, touch just, that uh, dial, so everybody touched that dial. So we have to let them. Yeah, that's right. Dial it. Right. Well, well, it it's interesting because after the, I believe it was the 68, 68 um, season where he had one point one two ERA, they lowered the mound specifically for that reason because it was getting to a point where I think Yastrzemski was the only one who hit three hundred, and they just said, you know what, it's not very exciting to just have, you know, strikeouts, two hitters, stuff like that. And so they lowered the mound. I just think it's sad that we're we're living in an era now for for people about you know my age, our age, whatever that they, they were they were losing these 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 great Hall of Famers. I mean Bob Gibson, one of the great pitchers like of his time, you could argue of all time. And 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 so for these young kids coming up who have no idea who he is, I just, it just it's just sad for them from a baseball historical perspective and Edward I know that uh, that that you j- just have this deep passion for the game and the history of the game and and and, yeah. and to see that loss I well then there's is, Luke uh, Brock really and and Gail Sayers I yep. mean just yeah just from every angle you know the, the this year it reminds me of 2016 when we lost a lot of celebrities all in a row this this year it's the sports folks who are who are yeah. unfortunately Dropping like flies, and I mean, you know, Willie Willie Mays is what eighty nine. Oh, he's older than that, I think. No, no, I think he's, he's, I, I think he's, 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 he's over ninety now. He's yeah, he's born thirty one, so you know he's 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 probably eighty nine right now. Yeah, it was uh, eyesight's gone, but I mean that'll be another big one when when he goes. You know? Yeah, so, that'll be uh, that'll be like the Pope going. Yeah, Maccabi, you know, already left us, so we've already got that. You know. In the background, I mean, it's been a rough year, especially for sports personalities. And uh, I, I would hope that the younger people, like you said, who, who don't even know about Bob, would uh, at least like look at old films because there there are a lot of films that you can. You yeah, can, but baseball yeah, as, as much as as much as they surf YouTube nowadays, yeah, they can they can stumble yeah. upon it. But uh, but there's an awful lot of young people out there that. I think if, if if it didn't happen before the year 2000, it just didn't happen. <laughs> I, I agree. I don't think baseball does a really great job of reminding people about the greatness of the past. Like the NBA 
does a lot to really remind people about magic, about bird, about Jordan. You know, um, it does a lot to reinforce its history. I think football is very in touch with its history. Yeah, and, yeah but, but and, wait a minute, though. That magic, though, you're talking about 79 on, and, and Bob Gibson, you're talking about the 60s. So okay, they, but, but even now, even, even my even my 19 year old college sophomore knows who um, uh, knows the logo, knows Jerry West. He's kicking himself because he just missed a Zoom chat opportunity with Jerry West. Oh, so, wow. so, so the young kids who know basketball, they know who he is. Did, did, yes. I, did I tell you the story about how uh, when when I met Jerry West and Mark when Mark Jackson was first becoming the uh, uh, coach? No. no, this is funny. So I, I get invited to uh, uh, kind of a special little event. Uh, so to introducing Mark Jackson as the new head coach, and Jerry West was there because he was you know, director of operations. The, the funny thing is, is that the week before, I happened to be talking to one of our employees at the, at the Lighthouse Resort who happened to say, you know what? He goes, just coincidentally, um, I played basketball against Jerry West because they both grew up in West Virginia at the same time, same age. And, uh, you know, I didn't know at the time it was, he was called Zeke from Cabin Creek. And I don't know how many people knew that, that term, right? And so he tells me this story about how, uh, you know, it, in high school, I mean, Jerry was still, you know, he was a superstar even then. And, um, and how nobody wanted to guard him. You know, they, they played for rival uh, uh, high schools. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so... Uh, this guy named his name was Rocky, and he was kind of wasn't a tall guy at all. But uh, anyway, he goes, "Well, I'll, here I'll guard him," and uh, and Jerry just took him to town. He scored like you know thirty nine points against right. him. So when I meet Jerry, I I, I, I tell him, uh, I say, "Yeah, hey, I, 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 Zeke from Cabin Creek," and he kind of smiled because I, I, I was one I guess one of the few people who knew his name, uh, you know, nickname. And I said, "Yeah, my uh, my uh, one of the guys who worked for me uh, went to you know Encino or whatever the name was high school and." Uh, I said that he, he guarded you one time and uh, and he scored 39 points against you. And Jerry just kind of smiled. He goes, I don't think so. And I said, oh, no, no, no. I got it wrong. You scored 39 points against him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow. Hey, one, hey, one of the great trivia questions out there, when he was at West Virginia, he was co-captain of the team. The other co-captain was Mary Lou Ret His name was Bill Retton, Mary Lou Retton's dad. Really? Yeah. Uh, Wow, that, well, that, that is a good, that's a tough one. All right, so we're done with the trivia then for today. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> we're we're going right. to get to you with the hard baseball questions in a minute. So um, this is kind of a weird one. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, San Diego soccer team walked off in protest after a Phoenix player used a homophobic term against one of its players. Now, you know, in the old days, you know, hey, your, your mom wears car, count, uh, army boots or something like that, right? And I know there's banter and there's trash talk back and forth. And I, I could kind of see, you know, if you wanted to go, hey, wait a minute, you know what? You cross the line, uh, you get a red card or you're kicked out of the game or something like that. But for the whole team? I think that's great. I think the solidarity I mean, is great. I think the, to, to sh that's what the team should do. Don't just make it down to just one member. You you insult the if when you're a team, if you're if one of your team members is being slammed and being you know uh, slandered, you the whole team is being slammed. But but, but why but why wouldn't it have been appropriate to just kick that guy out of the out of the team uh, off the out of the game? I mean, because you know now you're penalizing all of his teammates who may not agree with him. You know what well, I mean? the story I get, because I saw, I saw the video, Landon Donovan, who's one of the great U.S. men's soccer players of, of all time, he is the head coach and kind of the GM of that San Diego team. And yeah. the opposing player called one of Landon Donovan's players a, a homophobic slur. Now, that, that player happens to be openly gay. He is the yeah. only openly gay player. And, 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 Landon thought that was disrespectful, and he called he, he, he called the head coach to task for, for 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 controlling that situation. The coach just uh, just would say, "Hey, these are kind of kind of like the boys being boys," and hey, that's yeah. And, and, and but uh, but Landon wasn't having it, and this and he just called he just he just took all of his players off the field. Gotcha. And, okay, so there's a, there's more to it than just the one on one situation. Landis Landis thing Landis thing is in in these times. 
where there's just nothing but hatred that you see every day, just just splashed all over the news. This the the, the, the sport has no place for that. Yeah. And, and 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 that and that crossed the line in in his eyes. So and so I'm wondering if the it. head coach would have basically told his player, you know what, get off the field. Don't you're not coming back today or whatever. You think that would have been the end of it? For, at least so that for that the rest of the game, you know, Probably. we don't know how his, the rest of his teammates acted too. I mean, if they were, you know, I bet they were pretty his, upset. <laughs> but no, but if 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 that guy's teammates were supporting that that slur, you know, and they were got, you know, if they were if they were supporting it, then yeah, they all deserve to be punished. But I think you're probably right. Just getting rid of that player probably is the more appropriate response because it isn't the fault of the rest of the team, unless sure. it was something that the whole team seemed to be, the, you know, behind him. When By the way, the name of the, player, name of the player was a guy named Omar Ontiveros, and subsequently Ontiveros was suspended by the league and cut by the team. Yeah. That, 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 that'll that'll uh, kind of teach you to keep your mouth shut. Okay, guys, yeah. we're going to go to our uh, first commercial trivia question. Okay, are you guys ready? Sitting down? All right. Here's our first baseball question. Who is the only National League player to win National League MVP in his first season in the National League? Okay. Wow, that's a lot of math. Yeah. That's the first season <laughs> right. In his first so, season. In the you're writing it down. first season in the National League. So he was in the American. I'll, I'll give you a little hint. I mean, basically, he was in the American League. But when he got into the National League in his first season in the National League, he was uh, the uh, MVP. Okay, so he came from American League to National League. Not Correct. And okay. his first year in the National League, he won the MVP. And, and we're not talking, you know, a hundred years ago. Stay with us, Sport Econ One Hundred and One. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sport Econ One Hundred and One. One more time, Edward Brown here, along with Russell Jackman and Vern Glenn. Our first trivia question has stumped our panelists here. Who is the only National League player to win National League MVP in his first season in the National League? Okay, so let me preface my answer with this. I, I know that I know that Frank Robinson was with the Reds first and then the Orioles, and he won those right. awards in those leagues. But you're talking about the other way around. This yeah. guy was in the American League and then went to the National League. My, my first guess is Vita Blue. No, it's a, uh, he played after him. Uh, you'll know the player him. very well. He hit a very famous home run in the World Series, which crushed our home team. <laughs> he went from the Tigers to the Dodgers. Oh, Kirk Gibson? Kirk Gibson, 1988. Wow. Um, you know, Kirk Gibson was a great football player for Michigan State. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah I mean, he's got the body Kirk for it. Yeah, yeah. And he had kind of that football player tough mentality, yeah. too, even as a manager, kind of, kind of gruff and – Rough around the edges kind of guy. I'm going to say something that's not popular with you guys, but I will go to my grave swearing that Kirk Gibson used a corked bat to hit that home run. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised. It. I, uh, he's, I he's, swear he, it. He, he, okay, one bad leg, one, fr one foot, and leaning forward. And, and he hit it at the very tip of the bat. Yeah, he hit I, it at the I, very I tip of the bat while he's falling away. Have you ever seen anyone hit a no. home run like that? And, and, it was a, and it was a slider, so it didn't have the speed of a fastball, which, by the way, I don't think Eckersley was a, a really fast you know, uh, pitcher anyway. I know. It's, uh, but it, uh, I, I hated it as, as, a, as an A's fan, but I loved it for baseball. Uh, but you know what, Dodger Stadium, it's not technically, it is, it is not a hard stadium to hit a home run in. Well, how many feet was that? It was a warm night, you know, so the yeah, ball. And, 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 and even, even Dusty Baker the other day said when, when all those home runs were leaving the ballpark in the first game of the uh, American League Divisional Series with the Oakland A's, I mean, those, I mean, those bats were making contact with the pitch and they were flying out of the park. Dusty Baker even he did an in-game commentary going, wow, boy, I've never like, seen When you, you know, see it, yeah, the it was, video. It was, it was really warm that day. But you when know? you see the video of that swing, it's ugly. He is yeah. falling away. They, he doesn't have the force behind it, yeah. to, to the body behind it, to be able to knock that sucker out. I'm surprised it went out. I swear it. Went out it. I swear <laughs> it. I'm surprised you, it went you, 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 know, you know the backstory that Bob Costas told? You, you know about that story? Bob Costas was the field reporter for that game. And 
he was in the tunnel getting ready to come out because he had to do the post-game interviews. And at the time, the A's <laughs> were winning, and so he, he, was, he, he was of the mindset of, of grabbing an A's player and, 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 and doing that interview. While he was in the tunnel, Gibson was in the indoor batting cage underneath Dodger Stadium, and you, all, you could, all you could hear was grunting, like, uh, uh, as, he, as, as, he was, as he was swinging to get loose. And he overheard one of the coaches tell Tommy Lasorda, I think he's got one more swing at him. And then, uh, and, and then sure enough, Gibson comes into pinch hit, and then you saw what happened. Yeah, I'm surprised it's that Paul made it out of the comic bookish the way the, the the way he tells the story. But aren't you, aren't that, you, uh, that, that was his perspective as he was working the game. Well, as Russell pointed out, I'm I'm surprised that the ball went out of the infield. I mean, the way that you know he barely made uh, contact. But you know, it's funny. I got one quick fun funny story about watching uh, Kirk play third base for um, the Tigers, and there was a pop fly, and he he's he's you know he's looking up. And he's moving, and the, for some strange reason, the third base umpire is kind of also looking up and not paying attention to where he's standing. And Kurt bumps into the umpire and, and doesn't get the ball. And he just goes into an absolute tirade with the umpire. It's just classic. You know, yeah. what are you doing standing here? Get yeah. out of the way! You know? yeah. <laughs> you've got to be aware of social distance. Yeah, yeah. Well, nowadays, yeah. And I guess... He's got Parkinson's. Uh, yeah, sadly. Yeah. yeah. That's you know, like, that's, I saw a little special with him and, and Eck where it, it was very, it was actually kind of sweet, you know, having them uh, sit down in the bleachers and talking about the, uh, you know, the pitch and, and the, the whole game. And, and it, was, uh, it was almost like they were good friends in a way. It was really kind of sweet if you, if you see that. Um, I don't know. Maybe you guys, I'm, I, I, about Parkinson's, there, we, we don't know what causes it, right? It just... We, yeah. And we don't even know what triggers it. It just, bam! It just it. You, you know, it you could, comes you could on, say, and then that's there could be a lot of causes to it. There could be yeah. a you know, it could be a catch-all for a condition that really encompasses a lot of different things, including nerve degeneration plus environmental causes. There are certain things that people. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you could say for, it could could say, well, you know, maybe it was his football days at Michigan. But then you get someone like Michael J. Fox, who I don't think played linebacker. So, you know, he probably didn't have that, uh, that same. Right, game. right. So, um, more, some more NFL games being postponed due to the yeah. virus. I mean, how's that going to – what are they going to do? Are they just going to cancel games? Are they going to extend the – you know, are they going to make them play on a Thursday and a Friday? I mean – No, no. This, this <laughs> is the NFL. We, we, they, they don't cancel games. I mean, those yeah. games are postponed. Even, even with 20 – Tennessee Titans staff, employees, and players combined. That that game's going to be played on October. You just got to go to your third deep. You know, I mean, yeah. you got to treat it like everybody's injured. Look, you know, twenty people injured. That's still, I think, fewer folks injured. Uh, twenty folks missing on Tennessee. It's still less injuries than you have on Atlanta right now. I mean, Atlanta right. without COVID is like missing about two thirds of the team. And and the 49ers, uh, I mean, how many injuries they got now? Yeah, that's they've they, they've got they've got a rash of injuries. For, yeah, what for, time I mean, is it? I mean, the, the, yeah, you can tell <laughs> how many injuries they have by what the clock says on the wall right now. I mean, it seems like they, they get injured on an hourly basis. But you know what? I have a theory. We're we're only a quarter into the season, and I think I think the the the, the law of averages dictate that that the the the, the injury issue is going to hit every team before it's done. It just happened to hit the 49ers. 49ers were among the first to get hit that hard. And then the Falcons have been hit. And then, you know, the Titans are going through what they're going through with COVID. Yeah. They, we, 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 and then we saw the, the Kansas City Chiefs and the uh, Patriots game get moved from Sunday to Monday because you had a player test positive on both teams. Well, and no Cam Newton, which, yeah. you know, makes me think that I think that this is probably the last year we're going to be seeing Cam Newton. I think he's really? – this, this was supposed to be his, you know, rejuvenation by bringing him over to, uh, 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 over to New England. And but how old is he? Belichick. He's not that old. With him. Right? Well, I mean, he was – I mean, well, Mr. Jackman, he was only, what, two yards shy, stopped on a, on, on a, on a quarterback uh, carry – from, yeah. from that team being unbeaten going into Monday's game. And then you had Hoyer 
get inside the ten twice and they couldn't score. Oh, they had a chance to beat. They had a chance to beat the Chiefs. But the Forty ers after watching Hoyer play, I really, I my sympathies go out to New England. You know, I'm not a New England fan. That's that's brutal stuff. You, but the, you, you, you didn't, you, you didn't see the game. You didn't see the game then. I, no, I, I know you. I, was, I, I know you. I know you didn't see the game. There's no, no, there's no, no, no way. I couldn't because it was on too early. It was on. Uh, it was. Uh, I was. I was driving back from from the. the it, it, it was on at. It, it was on at 10 a.m. He doesn't if wake up until the crack of If, if you had seen the game, Belichick's game plan was perfect to keep Patrick Mahomes on the sidelines. I mean, yeah, it, New England could have, probably should have won that game, but they, they, well, they, they didn't. You know, I got to say one one quick thing about the 49er game. One thing I was really impressed with, I love the different plays, the, 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 all kinds of different new plays that seemed to – There were you, times the Niners looked totally like geniuses, and then there were times yeah. the Niners couldn't have looked more amateurish. Well, yeah. it was, you know, it was really the quarterback kind of, you know, I'm looking at this and going, I understand about underthrow, you know, like maybe you don't see a defender, but on like the, the second interception, it was like – so underthrown that it almost looked like he purposely he threw, threw it directly it. to the guy. Yeah. You know, it was, yeah, I was, it was I, I was at that game and we asked him about that and Mullen said he saw the linebacker, he threw it, but but he but but he it, it just it just came out of his hands wrong and it went low. Gotcha. He meant, okay. He, okay. Meant, he meant to throw gotcha. it high and that was it. But you know this isn't just on Nick Mullins. I mean it, it's yes it's on him, but the offensive line had a rough rough yeah rough night, especially. Mike McGlinchey. And yeah. Even, even on the left side of the line, I mean, they were they were just pushed back. I mean, the the front three, front four of Philadelphia. I mean, they 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 were just they were just too tough for them all night. And then the 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 pass rush, they they could. It was just one of those nights where where, where Wentz could get outside of the pocket and make it happen. And that's how you beat the 49ers. Get your mobile quarterback out of the pocket and let him either run. Or create off the dribble because that because the the, the the they have depth issues on the defensive secondary for the 49ers who continue to drop like flies. Well, and Vern, I, 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 I with all respect, you're absolutely right. I'm not saying you're not right, but the Niners shot themselves in the foot so many damn times with penalties. They would get to a good spot on the field and then they would push themselves back, and they also let two critical drives keep going. Due to defensive because penalties. Because of penalties, yes, just, yeah. Well, one one of those scoring stupid. drives. Yeah, they, they had back-to-back -back holding penalties on that one scoring drive that yeah. just kept it alive, and Philadelphia took advantage of it. And another. There were nine hey, wait, hold on, hold in on. that game and we couldn't close. And they yeah, couldn't stop a quarterback who decided to run. Okay. okay we go. got to cut through a break. All right. A second. Here's our second trivia question, impossible baseball questions. Who was the first major league player to hit two home runs in an all-star game? And I'll give you a hint. It was before 1950. Oof. Okay. Was that was that back in the days when they would play two All Star games in a season? Um, I don't. I think so, actually. I think okay. so. But again, he had he had two home runs in uh, in one All Star game in a single okay. All Star game. All right. Okay. Stay with us, Sports Econ 101. It's gonna be right back. Well, welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown, Vern Glenn, Russell Jackman. We're all here. Uh, third, second trivia question, who was the first major league player to hit two home runs in an all-star game? Which, in fact, I'm not sure I, don't rem I remember any all-star game where there were two home runs hit by no, the because they player. rotate guys out so much. You know, <laughs> yeah. at least in my time, there, there haven't been two all-star games in the season. So, Okay, uh, here's, here's kind of a weird hint. Okay, it's before 1950. He had such an odd first name. I don't Central think ever heard. What's that? Satchel Page. No. Okay, no, but that's, a, that's a, how many satchels do you know, right? <laughs> Woody Allen's kid. Yeah, Woody Allen's kid. Okay, four, four letters in his first name, and, and it's probably the only time you'll ever hear this first name. I, I'm not sure if that's a, such a big, big hint, uh, but uh, since time is of the essence, we'll just give it to you. Archie Vaughn. You know anyone named Archie? No. no. But you've heard no. of this guy. You've heard of Archie Vaughn, though. No, I haven't. No? Okay. no I don't know still... what team he played for, but, uh, but uh, no, I, I knew the name. What year was this? 1941. 1941. 1940. So it was during the war. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. It would be before the war, right? Because 
Started December yeah, before, before December, the U.S. got, yeah. before the the United States got involved. In the yeah, war. before the reward. Yeah, exactly. Okay, moving on here. Uh, so just reading a little bit here. Jimbo Fisher, coach of Texas A&M, he's got a guaranteed 10-year, $75 million contract, and the team is only ranked 13. I mean, so how does a guy, how does a coach get a 10-year, guaranteed $75 million contract? I mean, John Gruden has a 10 year, $100 million. Yeah, but that's a pro that's team pro. that at least, you know, should be able to afford it. Where and, and we also know that Mark Davis doesn't make the smartest investments. Yeah. But <laughs> well, when, we, when you talk about a college, I think that's terrible because that's taking away from the students, that's taking away from the other athletic programs. It's going to impact the entire school. And it was a, hu a huge mistake because. I mean, I'm not paying somebody named Jimbo $75 million. <laughs> I don't care how good his record is. So. Well, that's called having a good agent. You yeah, know, yeah a, exactly. I think it's up, it's up, it's, it's up to both sides to agree to those terms. I mean, the school, the school had to green light yeah. it. So, so, so the school must have the money for that. So, well, well, you know, or they're going to take it away from people that really need it from the school. It's going to impact the quality of education, and that's a real shame. Yeah. I mean, it's not, you know, like, let's say Nick Saban, you know, I mean, everybody knows him. Uh, you know, Jimbo Fisher, or Texas A&M. Texas a I mean, it's not Ohio State or, or you know, Stanford or, or Notre Dame. It's Texas yeah, A&M. No, but, but, but I think if you coming. go to the state of Texas, I think I think it's a well-respected school. It's an SEC oh, yeah, school. I, I, they, no, they, they no, got a yeah, strong, but watch the students' yeah. tuition to, you know, go from, you know, a uh, uh, – a thousand a quarter to two thousand dollars a quarter, whatever yeah. you know, per class. You know, well, suddenly the students are going to be stuck with the bill. That's how it always works. And, and it's still, I mean, it, it, it's the coach. It's not the actual players. You know, I mean, yes, coaches are very important. But no, I agree with you. Yeah, the players are the ones who actually have to have. have I work. agree with you. Okay. I, I, yeah, but he, yeah, but he, he was a big name. He had huge success at Florida State. And, uh, Jimbo and, Fisher and, isn't that big of a name. He's he's okay, but he never. He, I mean, he never won anything big in, in prior to that. Yeah, who was who was the big Florida guy? Um, not Lou Holtz. Uh, there was Nick yeah, Bowden. Well, 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 he had Steve Spurrier Bob in Florida. Yes, Spurrier yeah. was Spurrier. A big name and Bobby Bowden, right? Yeah, Bobby, Bobby Bowden. Bowden. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, I wouldn't pay either of those guys seventy-five mil. So yeah, you know exactly. That's, all right, the, NF, the NFC East. Here's a question. Will any team win it? By the, by the way, Florida State did win the 2014 National Championship. Okay. Good. Under Jimbo Fisher. Six, six years ago, but that's a long time in college. You yeah. know? Hey, 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 Mr. J where do you live? You live in Northern California. Yeah. Where's Florida State? That's in the hotbed of college football. So I mean, it, it's religion down there. It's a whole. But Texas A&M different... isn't. Texas is. Sure it is. Are you well, kidding me? In the state no, I, of Texas, I, I agree with the two the popular first. sports are, are college football and spring football. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Texas A&M. I mean, it is it is big for football. Yeah, but again, the ranked thirteenth. You know. Yeah, I don't think Texas a and ms going to go anywhere anytime soon. They just don't have the talent, and I don't think they'll get the talent under Jimbo Fisher. If the if they go to the the to the the uh, uh, championship tournament, I'll, I will eat my words there for you, Vern. All right. Okay. Okay. Sure. okay. So now, um, so back to the NFL, NFC East. Um, so here's a question. The lease. The NFC lease. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Will, will anyone win it? Philadelphia will. They have the, – Carson Wentz is clearly the best quarterback in that. He's a big boy. You know, you yeah. see him running over the four yeah. years. Yeah. Yep. He's got the championship pedigree. They're pu putting things together. They played like they really were a good team. Yeah. And, you know, they yeah. should have never gotten that tie. Kicking that punt so that they got a tie was a huge mistake. And they're going to probably rue that come playoff time, I think. Okay. Well, well, they, were, they, they were 0 2 and 1. They were the desperate team, and they played like it. Yeah. And they yeah, took it. I see nothing from Dallas. Dallas is a. Dallas is a, is a they're a choke act. Um, the Giants might as well just give up their season already. They're just completely worthless. And so there you go. And the, the Washington Washingtons, yeah. you know. Have we ever seen a division this poor? 
Yeah, the NFC East is like this every year. When, when well, has the NFC East been good since the Dallas Cowboys back in the mid-90s or maybe the Giants? Well, the how, about the, how about when uh, Eli uh, was taking over uh, the Giants, uh, you know, against the Patriots and winning? Yeah, that was, what, 2008 or something, 2009? Yeah, but that's after 1990 with, the, uh, with Dallas. Well, well I, I guess about, that's... How about Mr. Jackman looks at 2008 as if it was 1819? <laughs> We well, got that's 12 years ago, man. <laughs> yeah, but that's, 12 you know, years come on. Before. My, my, my kids weren't even born. If, if it's before my kids were born, <laughs> it is a lifetime ago. That's how wow. I look okay. at it. The 2011, is the, I, I, before that, is ancient history. All right, guys? <laughs> That is pretty funny, though. Now that uh, works. Last thing on my list, and uh, then we'll go, can, uh, can, can Miami beat the Lakers? Jimmy Butler. No. I mean, they did once. But it took it took uh, 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 it took Butler a, a superhuman effort that I think he only gets once in this playoff series. But by, by by the end of this weekend, when this show airs, the Lakers will be the. So we, we the think NBA it's going to be uh, four to one. Yeah, like the way that the other series were, or four two, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I I LeBron was chagrined. You could see at the end of that game for not winning. And well, Jim, they, Jimmy said, "Jimmy said, LeBron, you're in trouble." Yeah. Well, he's just trying. He's, he's, just, he's just trying to get in his head. You know? <laughs> but that was trying so he well, was in LeBron's head. If, and that's, if ever and that's, there was, and that's, a, if ever there was an instance of a guy putting a team completely on his shoulders and carrying him into a victory, that was Butler doing it in that game. You can't do it. I mean, the rest of the, the Lakers are going to pile all over Butler in the next game. And the, it's going to be up to Hero. It's going to be up to uh, uh, Iguodala. It's going to be up to, you know, these periphery guys to get the win next game. And I don't think they're going to do it. That's you, you, Actually, speaking of Iggy, you think this will be his last year? <clears throat> Could be. I mean, he's not very get, getting very many minutes off the bench. I mean, he got – I guess it's up to Iguodala. I mean, he he's 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 shown that he he can play at that level. He's he he's not of starter quality anymore, but he's still a pretty good defender. And I thought and he said a two or three minute. year deal with them, didn't he? It was like a couple year deal, couple maybe because it was transferred over from the Memphis mm -hmm. uh, 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 deal that he had. Oh, yeah. So I think that was a three year deal. I, I'm trying to remember. So I think they're stuck with him next year, whether they want to or not. Kind of hard question, but do you think he'll make it in the Hall of Fame? I would put him in for sure. Based on I, what? Well, I, based, yeah, that's... based on Rookie of the Year, a, 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 a Finals MVP, um, uh, uh, and three championship rings. You know, that's 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 enough to get you in. There hasn't been a six man like uh, Iguodala. That's in a our generation. Man, I could say. That's a pretty good argument. Yeah, he's thirty six years old, so he's 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 okay. certainly in his career. We well, we uh, cut you got cut off there. Very kind of cut off there. Yeah. Uh, he's. He, I, I was saying he's thirty six years old, and so he's 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 on the elevator down, and the elevator's almost hit the ground floor. You know, it's weird. I think about that. I go at age thirty six. I was still on my way up. <laughs> maybe, maybe uh, I've been going sideways and diagonal. And, and oh, how about Tom Brady? He's forty three. That's amazing. Yeah, yes. forty three. Playing football. I mean, yeah. that's, in that's the COVID crazy. crisis too. On top of all that, no, I. Well, it, Brady that's said how much COVID football. has to do. What do you think the COVID part? I mean, it's not like he's eighty eight years old. So, what does the COVID part have to do with him? Just the fact that he's putting himself at risk like everybody else is in, oh. in the NFL. And then you just, you know, you have uh, uh, the entire, you know, what's been going on. He probably looks at what happened in New England and says, it's a good thing he got out of there. You know, he could, he, instead, of, instead of Cam Newton coming down with COVID, it could have been him. Uh, do we know how he got, how Cam got it? Yeah, we, yeah, we, we, it's unknown as to how he contracted it, though. We have no idea. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, we have uh, just a quick minute before we have to go to our last trivia question, which is a hard one. I'm like the other one. Oh, yeah, the other one. I'm going with the baseball stitches. I think that one 
you know. Yeah. It's easy in, compared to Arky Clark or whatever. I'm not Arky Clark. Come on, man. Arky Vaughn. Hey, speaking, Vaughn. Speaking, of, speaking of baseball, who's manager of the year? Is it Mattingly? Are they giving out awards? Oh, they, oh sure. Why sure, not? Why not? Yeah. Well, just because 60 games, it's kind of hard to – Someone's got to be MVP and, you know, all that. Yeah, there's going to be all of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, 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 I'm not sure. I, to be honest with you, after the Giants dropped out, I've been really meh on baseball. I, I haven't been paying any attention to it. I, I've been – Well, been what about when the World Series happens? Will you get back into it then? Sort of. I mean, it's been a tough year, you know. As a Giants fan, I had to accept the national, the, the designated hitter, and 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 uh, uh, you know, we we got ripped off on those last couple of games because of the the, the yeah. umpiring. So I, I've been I've been a little bit of a bitter baseball fan. You know what? Out of out of all the players and all the sports things, I think it's been hardest on our friend Vern. <laughs> you know, he's had it's to do been, it. It's been it's been an adjustment, but uh, but still, I mean, there's 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 still practices I go to. There's still games that I go to. There's still stories that I shoot and and broadcast in a, in a, in a that's business true. that uh, that that's that's three sixty five. I mean, we have yeah. we have we have live newscasts every day, and we don't take so day. except except for the the day before and after the All Star game. Usually, as of the two days, there's nothing going on. But <laughs> oh, yeah, but well, that's. That's that. That's that's why you got. That's why you got to come with uh, your, your your good human interest stories to fill that exactly. time. All right. Last trivia question: Who is the youngest everyday player to appear in the World Series? And it's not Dwight Gooden. You have to actually go back before I, him. I, I I do I do have a guess on that. Well, one. Well, no, this is tough. This okay. is really tough. Okay. He tells like what year range we're talking. Uh, about. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll give you the year and the team. Nineteen twenty four, New York Giants. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you see the uh, eyes uh, 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 <laughs> Oh, the audience can see that. But it seems like I said that both the guys got back in their chair. Their eyes. It isn't Babe Room. If it isn't Babe awesome. Room, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. All right. Stay with the Sports Econ One Hundred One. We'll be right back with some closing comments. Two thousand and eight. That's right. Okay, hey, welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Last time for today, Edward Brown here, Vern Glenn there, Russell Jackman there. Our trivia question is, who is the youngest everyday player to appear in the World Series? Uh, I, I defer to Mr. Brown on this one. Yeah, Fred, oh, yeah. Fred Lindstrom. He was 18 years old. Well, you got 1906? It. Holy smokes. What, now, now, whatever stats, like but, but position, uh, lefty, righty, well, I don't know any of that stuff. I just don't. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> because there, there's actually a guy who was 16 years old who did appear in in a World Series, uh, or he appeared in a game. And, and again, you're talking about the 1920s. Okay, new role for a trivia question. If you didn't actually see or have anything to do with this person being involved in the trivia question, you can't ask it. If it's before even your lifetime. You can't oh, ask. Uh, so I can't ask um, who hit the uh, shot for round the world in 1951. No, in the no you can't. No, really? you're forbidden from that. <laughs> got to be something within our lifetimes now. Uh, gotcha. Hey, I'm going to try to try to pull it within, you know. With our lifetimes. Okay, well, good thing I'm 60 because then I, I got at least a, a few years on there. Okay. So, God, I'm 60. I don't even think that. Okay. Uh, here's our thoughts for the day. I saw a sign that said, watch for children, and I thought, that sounds like a fair trade. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For us with kids, yeah, I thought that was pretty good. And um, here's a, a little pun here. How do you kiss a florist? With tulips. Isn't that cute? Uh, uh, that, 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 that's a dad joke. That's a dad joke. Oh, uh, my my, my, my uh, daughter used to hate when I did that. And then when she went away to college, and then she actually kind of looked forward to it because it was kind of cute, she thought. All right. Well, that's it for today, guys. Uh, Tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and asking more sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Good night, America. Adios, America. Oh. So, yeah.